Hello, welcome to Fatito's Gang. I'm Nenna Jemye. There's been quite a bit of discussion about the developmental mindset of our country. Is it good or is it bad? Well, that's the topic for today. Let's see what the gang has to say about it. Stay tuned. There are many people who say that until our political process can be one in which the developmental mindset takes hold, in which the entire political process focuses on development, we will continue to lag way behind the Asians who have managed to make their political process about development, about progress for their people. Now, um, what is the challenge? Why is it that people that who we are at par with or who are way behind us have overtaken us in terms of the quality of life that they live, in terms of peace and harmony in their society because they, they manage to bridge these income inequalities through growth and development in their societies. But we are just getting into more and more quagmire. Every part of our country is becoming a war zone because people are dislocated economically because we are not developing as we should be relative to our peers. How can we make our political process one in which a development state mindset is owned by everyone? Go ahead. It's, it's, um, it's leadership challenge because as the um, popular leadership development expert um, John Maxwell said, everything rises and falls on leadership. If the leadership, the leaders are able to capture proper vision for their nation and for their people, then they're able to harness and mobilize citizens to fall in line. It starts with leadership that believes that citizens ought to have a certain quality of life and begin to develop systems, institutions, structures, infrastructures that will give citizens the opportunity, the platform to begin to live as real human beings. What we have here is lack of leadership. If I say incompetent leadership, it will be as if you're trying to insult some people. But the fact is that we don't have quality leadership. And not just at the topmost, at different levels. That is our challenge. But if I may just take that track and push it some. The question of leadership, very often when we throw it out, people think of somebody who has a position yeah. of authority. And yet we know that everybody should be a leader. And that leadership, you know, the leader who had no title it can come from all ranks of society. What are we doing that's making us fail so badly in producing a culture of leaders? What? Uh, yes, um, Prof, uh, it's kind of interesting you brought this point up because uh, my take on this is that uh, people need to get involved and people need to be, there has to be incentive for them to be involved in politics. Like I was saying, if you notice uh, in every strata of uh, development, for example, United States, because I continue going back on that uh, uh, country because it seems like uh, that is where we are modeling our democracy and the people, uh, people are people all over the world. But having said that, Prof, you come to realize that our people are disenfranchised because we felt that there are classes of people within the Nigerian hemisphere that actually makes it impossible for people to develop politically and economically. Involvement of people, yes. yes. Um, leadership, like Prof said, yes, has to be all-inclusive. And uh, in this wise, let's go a bit um, intellectual. Um, that famous feminist, Dambise Moyo, when she was doing her seminar on um, Dump Aid, did say clearly that the resources that are available, even within your competitiveness, is available to you and I. But what has the holoi poloi, the person down the line? And most often times we want to hide, well, people are not educated. My grandmother was not lettered, but she had conscious political education yeah. to the extent that she joined movements that helps leaders to account. So 
when Moe was now then talking about these resources being available to us, and then you and I go to take uh, bread and butter during elections and then leave the politicians to beginning to, to argue, or argue, learn and unlearn on how to corner the resources of state and look at their pockets as the first line, and then we haven't started. One of the uh, uh, things that I often say to get people to look at citizenship and how citizenship engages uh, and affects the political process is the state of things in South Korea and how it changed. Uh, we had a similar kind of political environment, was very retrogressive, money politics, uh, you know, godfathers, all of those. And then the state institution intervened, the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission says, look, now Politics must be about debates. Mm -hmm. You debate your ideas, issues on the streets, in the classrooms, in, on t in TV studios, uh, in uh, uh, college football speeches, and everybody began to talk about ideas. And the ideas that began to dominate were naturally, naturally. ideas of how you make people's lives better. better. Mm -hmm. And South Korea became the developmental state that we know it to be, in which Everything, their energies, their resources, their thinking is on how do we better the quality of life of our people. What could we possibly do to make Nigerian political parties, as an example, develop a really strong worldview that is based on developing this state? Developing, Prof, developing, developing, I think, I think it's everybody a, buying in. And I think it's education, sir. People need to be educated, not just the political class, but individuals. Yeah. We need to be educated. We need to understand that our actions and inactions is contrary to what the outcome of the election or whatever political process that is going on. Yeah, we call so, it education. Yes, okay. yes. Yes. Book, book education? No, 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 I don't mean knowledge that. Education. Knowledge but education? Knowledge education. That's what yeah. particular yeah. parties do. Yes. What particular parties knowledge are education. supposed to do yes. is to generate these kinds of conversations. Yeah. But something about the way our, oh, our parties are structured. The Asian, the the Asian basket case that you mentioned, you know, with the Vietnam, Cambodia, and they all came and everybody bought into it. What I have seen in a client is a situation where vision is not directed and understood at the same level. Yeah, I have a leader who says, okay. and I see has quite some following, okay. unfortunately, mm -hmm. that the only way I can get my people to come in my direction is to give them butter and bread. Yeah, that's true, but look at it this way. You see, there's a point we are missing here. Our political parties does not have uh, what I call ideology. Because for a political party to have an ideology, it means they must bring out a narrative out there that people must key into. For example, there are social issues that affects everybody. Are you sure they don't have ideologies? They don't. Oh, they I, don't. I, 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 I can have, have, have you on that. I can have you on that. I can tell you one of two ideologies that they have. Just give me a second. Oh, well, well, politics? Yes. They well, have, no, no. That's, they, well, that's good. They believe, oh, the, challenge, like the, the, challenge, like the challenge here is there's massive mental poverty. Like Prof said, in South Korea, the government, through the uh, electoral management organization, decided that things have to be done in certain ways. And put its feet on the ground, and things began to be done in certain ways. If, for instance, in our own environment, leadership decided to say, there has to be conversations. It things has to be issue based, not just because you are white or you're black or you're yellow, you're north, you're south, you're red, you're Muslim or Christian. Issue, but what are those issues? Every human being needs good basic infrastructure to survive. Use these issues as um, things to discuss. Who is going to make sure that we have everybody has water? Who is going to make it possible for us to have electricity so that people can take advantage of these infrastructures to uh, uh, you know, use their potential and support the Look system. at the basket so case. <laughs> Look at the basket case that we have on our hands. Yes. Is it that we have a surfeit of economists and good-minded human beings? Look Sof at the Ajay Okuta. 
Is, 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 is that mental is, poverty that we talk about? Because the leaders are mentally poor. Because people and the okay. leaders that we have have set an agenda to line okay. their pockets. Okay. Simple. Okay. Well, let, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this. But just to bear in mind that there was a time in this country where newspapers like the New Nigeria, mm -hmm. the Guardian, those early days, intellectuals yeah. were there dominating conversation around and ideas discourse. of our mixed society. Mm -hmm. well, when we come back, we'll talk some more to those. The gang notes that because leadership's vision is not necessarily clear, this actually negatively affects our country's mindset when it comes to development. Are these in line with your thoughts? Let's hear from you. If when the government is saying that we, it will be reduced, the number of people that are just striving to get there. Yeah. There are youths coming up now for um, reformation group and all that. We can just join hands together and make sure we move this country ahead to the next phase of um, development. The old people in politics, they are just promising us to do so many things, but they don't actually fulfill their promises. And we youths that are complaining, we only complain. And from the look of things, most people are scared because some people don't want to face um, the wrath of the politicians. So I'll just say we all need to brace up, we all need to be encouraged, and we all need to stand on our feet to move this country to the next phase of life. As an individual, I would say that we need to get ourselves to active participation in government itself. It's getting the leaders to do what they need to do. A town hall meeting, I've seen several town hall meetings that have been held, but nothing so very positive has actually been, been put in place. But for me, as an individual, I feel we should get involved in politics. We should always keep a track on what they do. Example is what is going on within um, Lekki Expressway now. They promised good road for us, but the good road they are doing is not nothing to write home about. And I would say that uh, we just need to get them to do what they need to do. We shouldn't rely on town hall meeting publications. Open letters should be written to the governor. Open let letters should be written to senators who are representing our several constituencies and words. Let them get. Let them get to remember the promises they've made. Let them get to remember that the Marxists, we, we voted for them. And they are not just the one that put themselves there. They, we voted for them and they need to do what is required of us. Our children must not suffer what we are going through now. Our, our, the upcoming generation must not suffer what we are suffering now. Nigeria of those days, is where we keep our mouth shut. Let us get involved in politics. So we're back. Um, we were saying before we went away that there was a time in this country where there was a, an enormous discussion of ideas uh, in newspapers, on the uh, lecture circuits and, and all of that seems for some reason that we're not engaged anymore. Many of the intellectuals who led those kinds of conversations have either left, left town or been incorporated and somehow we are not seeing the ideas that will build up to a developmental state mindset uh, in, in, in people. Perhaps citizens can do something to reorient the political class, to reorient the media, the media seems to have lost it, in my opinion, in terms of the direction, general direction. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in those days, media scholars used to say that the medium is a massage. The medium, you know, more or less determines uh, how we interpret things. The media seems to be focused on celebrities, on... But... Eleven things. But an empty mind, an empty stomach, it's a suffix. It's an emptiness. The period you, you mentioned, and for those who, who really know, in terms of the late Stanley Massey boss, they were attracted back into this country because they had a government structure, even within these newspaper houses that you just mentioned. And they had something they had to look up to. A number of these newspaper houses 
have gone so much down that salaries are not paid. People depend on, on brown envelopes and what have you. Of course, naturally, intellectualism will take flight. But for a few that are still able to hold their ground, but for a few that still say, despite all the negatives, and I think I agree with you, because at the end of the day, we still have to build our country ourselves. Yes, and uh, in, in respect of what is happening, yes, sir. we have to bring this back up, encourage the young and coming that are coming out of the that's universities exactly, and then, you yeah, know. That's exactly where I'm going. Uh, we cannot brand this thing to be uh, a journalist uh, issue. Because the truth of the matter is that they're reporting what they're seeing. Mm. And they are not really doing the investigative uh, reporting. We all know that. So I really don't want to you know, push this uh, argument into that narrative. The truth of the matter is that we need to catch them young. Our young people need to get involved in electoral and the political process. And some of them are already showing, showing faces they, now. They, they are, they are. But if, you, if, encourage you, if you pay attention, most of them does not even have the PVC, which is actually they are where the power lies. So what, what we are confronted here with is people who have no interest, who are hungry, who felt that the uh, uh, government have failed them from, from, from onset. And these people, some of them finish university. I think we need to also look, take back at the issue of the media. It says mm -hmm. they are the agenda set, they set agenda. It's one of the critical roles. You see, when the media is, refuses to set agenda as we have it today, yes. the media today is not setting agenda at all. But it's not for the media no, to no, set no. an agenda. Yes, it's the media. No, it that's the major role. That's the major, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the major, agenda, no, that's the okay. major role of the media to set agenda. I mean, they don't agenda. have to do it consciously yes. to come out. Yes. But in, invariably, because so many things happen yes. in the world, yes. it's only those ones that the media choose to yeah. focus on that's it. that, that gets become the central issues. The one of the critical roles of the media is to set agenda. Agenda for development. Agenda for public discussion. If the media does not do that, it has lost its first place. And why it is not going to be able to do that right now is because of the nature of media ownership. The owners of the media right now are politicians who are critically interested in their personal political interests. So they project the ideas in the public space that they want to be projected. Those days when media ownership was in the hands of those who really cared about development and society. But what about was, the, the fact that the agenda has been taken away from the media by the social media, the new media? And, and therefore, more things are even being discussed in WhatsApp groups and all of that. And most people are not reading newspapers anymore. Nigerians, to be frank with you, my experience is that middle class Nigerians hardly watch television. If they watch any, it's foreign TV. Well, the paradigm has shifted. And so the traditional media has to now move and, and, and teach it. Take leadership. Now, I haven't said but, but that. This, this creates a really the more truth. confusing world. We will talk about the VUCA world, yeah. volatile, yes. uncertain. Mm you know, and yeah. all of that, but it's come home to roost. The agenda is not set by anybody, and we're drifting around. Yes. Where does leadership play a role in bringing us back to some understanding? Because there's all the self-interest here. Mm -hmm. We're waking up every day, we're looking at statistics. Our country is becoming a, a nowhere country. Mm -hmm. All of the others are going forward. We talked about the fact that the fourth industrial revolution is upon us. Mm -hmm. People are planning how to position their countries to move forward in this revolution that is taking place. There's no conversation in Nigeria about so there, what's well, really going to make a difference well, in people's lives. Perhaps, at least on the political perhaps for us, we haven't had a conversation. Mm -hmm. The conversation is that we are going backwards. <laughs> and it's so loud. <laughs> and to be, to I be wouldn't frank, like to agree that we are going to be frank. frank. No, 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 no. I would like to <laughs> believe that we are <laughs> everything. The conversation is for us to I am forward. not going to <laughs> say to you and looking at the media, and I think I agree with you that uh, the media is very, very important. But in what aspect of life have you seen developmental agenda from the security? My prescription, pure and simple, is that structures have to be in place. Who and provide governance. The structures? And governance, yeah, provide the structures. governance they, they, they has to be strengthened. has to. But because it then comes back to citizenship. Citizens must be engaged. People who are knowledgeable must enter the arena and try. Part of the problem, I think, is that people who know have in the past said that you have know, arena is for vagabonds and all kinds of people don't disturb me. And they're, they're making laws for you 
They are implementing programs in your name. You don't have a choice. The authoritative allocation of value in society, the classic definition of political science, mm. of politics, sorry, by instinct, is there. Once they make those laws, you have to obey. You, obey. you have to obey. And you are obeying laws yes. made by vagabonds, as you call them. It's Can we? Citizens so lost their voice. And there's a disconnect. Yes. We talked about the fact that citizens do not know how politics and political process affect their everyday living. They just live it. Once they're able to understand that politics affects their everyday life, where, where they worship, how they go to market, when they, when, whether they have water or they don't have water, how they send their children to school, when they understand the import of politics in their daily lives, then they will rise up. They are, right now, they are operating a sense of helplessness. Yeah, but but what, what happens is that we, we began this mindset of, okay, the roads are not good. Mm -hmm. ah, I have enough money. I can buy a, an SUV, go over the road. Yeah. The, that is not true. I can seek my own borehole. Everybody becomes their own local government. Yeah. Ah, it's impossible to bring all of these together to function well. It is only leadership that can harness diversities. Bring diversities together and take advantage of diversities. It's not the ethnic, it is ability of leadership to say, look, there's every ethnic um, uh, lineage in this country has something to offer. Developmental yes, it is the leadership. Is one the yes, that leads by example. When I say leadership, one I'm talking about that is clean. We have leaders. Well, they yeah. don't have well, to be clean problem, as far as, as what the as problem snow. I think we have is a set of leaders, <laughs> yes. rulers yes. who are not leading by example. Well, I, I think, I think we've uh, uh, blamed the leadership. leaders enough. We should ask what citizens are doing. Yes. Uh, look, in some parts of the world, when things got to a certain point, citizens just moved onto the streets. In the Philippines, it took little women with their rosary beads mm -hmm. to stop a Marcos. We can't complain in our bedrooms and all of that, and time is sliding past us. Well, we have movements huh? coming up. Okay. Quite a number of movements well, and the, we're youth, going to be the youth groups are wait, waiting for Aki to lead some of those movements. <laughs> See you later. So in conclusion, the gang advises that leaders should set clearer visions when it comes to development and then communicate them to the public. Well, that's all that we have time for today on Patito's Gang. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and that you found it to be informative and enlightening. Join the conversation. Follow us on all our social media pages displayed right there on your screen. I am Nenna Jimmy, and until next time, take care and be well.